In Britain, our personal debts add up to over £190 billion, and the average household owes a record 13 grand. When you're on benefits, debts can be easier to rack up and much harder to pay off. Being on benefits, is, <laughs> they need to be in there to realise what it's like, and it's not easy. It's, it's really not. Once you're deep in the red, how much you owe is always on your mind. More another 24-7 uh, money box, another payday loan. But it can be hard to escape the debt trap. It's not good to have getting debt and getting like, loans out now. But like I say, I only live once, so... Meet the ex-gambling addict who can't control his spending but isn't sure if it's worth taking a job. Um, well, if I took the job, it would have basically made us worse off, I reckon. The aspiring rapper who's spent thousands on music equipment but now he's on benefits, can't pay the bills. A notice of summons of arrears, payday loans. And the former nightclub singer and single mum, who owes so much, she's now facing eviction. They're saying that I've got to pay £807 pound or they're going to seek possession of the house. Between them, they owe over 40 grand, and the debt is about to come knocking. When life gives you lemon, make lemonade. That's my motto. In the UK, we're drowning in debt, and many benefit claimants find themselves in the red. Hartlepool, in the northeast of England. 29 year old unemployed David lives with his partner Rebecca. They started a family five years ago and have three children. <coughs> David's been in and out of work for the last few years, but has managed to rack up around £30,000 in loans and unpaid bills. Like, if I had the money, I would just spend. They are gone. Yeah, I'd, I'd just spend, spend, spend. I'd just basically I'd spend, spend. No, I just like going to the shop and buy, buying stuff what I don't need. The couple have been spending thousands on high-interest loans on stuff for the house, including the latest top-of-the-range washing machine. My girlfriend wanted this one, but I wasn't bothered which one I wanted. I just wanted the washer. She wanted this because it's got um, super speed, super eco air wash. You can bed in, in like, all your baby care in your dark, and it's got like a bubble wash, but it's a, actually it's a stain remover. It's like, get your stains out of clothes. This £700 washing machine will eventually cost £2,500, nearly four times its normal sale price. Pay a 13 quid a week, uh, like, for three years. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it'd be about nearly, because it's, like, obviously, your interest would be about two and a half grand, maybe. Two and a half grand, two grand. David's also bought his high-spec computer on the Never Never. But it's one of the best, best ones out. I can use it for other things, but it's mainly for games. The computer is also going to take three years to pay off, and with interest, cost another two and a half grand. It's 13 quid a week or something, and you basically just repeat it every Saturday. Well, I like it's my thing, basically. I don't, I don't need it, but I like it, and I've always had a computer. David's now spending around half of their £450 a month job seekers' allowance, paying off his household items. So if you work out that a month, that's, uh, I think that's worked out 220 quid, I think. 220 quid a month for like four items to be in the house, which is crazy. <laughs> but it's not just David's spending that's a problem. He also developed a gambling habit. Thought of gambling about six years ago. Just Went in the bookies one day, didn't have a clue what I was doing, then I was sort of winning big money, and I just got addicted to it. As the gambling became an addiction, David got into even more debt to fund his habit. It's destroyed my life. I wish I never laid eyes on the place. David might regret his gambling, but he's unrepentant about his 30 grand debts. It's not good to have getting debt and getting like, loans out and that. Like my older brother would say, if you haven't got, you should just don't have, basically. But like I say, I only live once, so... <laughs> that's what I think I do it for, too. Just a few miles up the northeast coast from Hartlepool is the town of Seam. 
43-year-old former factory worker and nightclub singer Julie has piled up nearly £2,000 in debt and rent arrears, which she's struggling to pay off with her benefits. But I, I absolutely love singing around the clubs. That's one of them when I was in the club at a club in Sunderland, that one there. When I was younger, I would have never have dreamed for one moment that I would ever be on benefits. I worked from being 16. And I worked weeks, weekends. I did acting, I did singing, I did everything. And as well as working full time, I would have never, ever have dreamed that I would ever have come to this. Julie ended up on benefits due to a dramatic change of circumstances. 10 years ago, after being told that she could never have children, she felt unexpectedly pregnant with son Alex. See you tonight, son. You be careful. See you tonight, son. I was just absolutely over the moon, elated that I could actually have this one child that I basically wanted. It just, me it just meant that I'd gone from being like an independent woman who was working full time and had a career singing around the clubs and like acting on the side on nights and stuff and just doing all these things to like having to pack all that in because I had a child to look after. I ended up on benefits because I, I couldn't work. I had nobody to look after Alex or help me with Alex at all. As a single mum with no family support, Julie was forced to give up work to look after her new baby, but she soon found it a struggle on benefits. I couldn't afford to pay television licence. I couldn't afford to pay water rates. So I got caught not having a television licence and I got fined £250, things like that. And it's just, it all mounts up, doesn't it? With her debts piling up, Julie got desperate. Five years ago, she started working on the side again as a singer without telling the benefits office. I shouldn't have done it, but I started singing again to try and make some money and I didn't declare it, and I should have. And obviously, I did it for a while, for a few months, and I got somebody told on me. When I got caught, it was the fraud squad. Somebody phoned the fraud squad and said I was singing. Julie's failure to declare her income meant she says she got landed with a £3,000 fine. Her benefits were cut to pay it back, adding to her debt woes. Uh, they put me money down at £90 a fortnight to live on. And I, had, and I got that to live on for five years. And the, the, the debts just mounted up and mounted up. That was when I, I went on rock bottom. That was when I just, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't carry on. Julie's struggling to find a solution to her debts. Meanwhile, in Maidstone, Kent, father of six Diaz, has been claiming sickness benefits for the last four months. Diaz is an aspiring rapper and musician and hopes one day to make it big in the music business. Despite his love of urban music, three years ago, Diaz decided to move out of the city for what he hoped will be a better quality of life. Left London because of all the crime and uh, drugs and violence and all that stuff to, you know, raise the kids somewhere decent, you know? So, yeah. But Diaz's big move has ended up with him relying on benefits and in 10 grand of debt. The stress of the daily commute caused him to become depressed. So he quit his £30,000 a year job in IT. I was travelling from Maidstone all the way to Farringdon every day, sitting on a coach for about two hours. Um, that's two hours there, two hours back. Um, my health started to deteriorate, you know, and then not seeing the kids was also a big issue for me as well. So there was lots of things, you know, that was really affecting me. So I ended up having to quit, and that was it. He now claims £17,000 a year in benefits, and Diaz's debts are threatening to spiral out of control. I've got a gas bill, an electric bill, which is about £2,000 at the moment. 
I'm in a bit of rent arrears at the moment. I owe £375 from last month's rent and this month's rent of £875. Yeah, not looking too good. Uh, uh, my uh, kettle's broke, so um, <laughs> I've gone back to, to the basics of uh, how to make a cup of tea. Diaz now spends more time with his kids. But two months ago, he split with the mother of his two youngest children. My ex-partner has just um, come round and um, dropped off the kids, and uh, we've had another little bit of a row. The breakup has caused added financial strain. There's still a lot of raw feelings and a lot of raw emotions and defer from the fact that we mounted up a lot of debt together and it's going to need to be addressed, you know? And we've got these two beauties that are going to need both of us to, to look after. Um, the debts, the emotions, that's the reason, another reason why I'm going for therapy for depression, you know? So, yeah, there's a lot going on. That's it. All right, come on. Push, push for daddy. Push for daddy. With the bills piling up, and Diaz also now behind on his rent, he's just received some devastating news. His landlord has given him notice of eviction. He needs to be out in a month. You know, they want they want me out. But hey ho, <sighs> when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's my motto. <laughs> Coming up, could David have found a job to help clear his debts? Take it's going to be for driving for them, but self-employed, delivering parcels. Diaz chooses funding his music career over paying his rent. I'd draw now almost £300 to get the camera and, sa and save my camera. And Julie gets a bombshell letter from the council. They're only giving me £14 benefit towards my rent. The average household debt in the UK is increasing by over a thousand pounds a year. But when you're on benefits, juggling your finances is even more challenging. In Hartlepool, David has racked up around 30 grand in debt due to his gambling and spending. Girlfriend Rebecca has had to take control of their £23,000 a year benefits to stop them getting deeper in debt. Yeah, well, if I had it, I'd get the urge to gamble. <laughs> so that's why I don't have it no more. <laughs> it all goes in my bank and it's all got to be worked out. You see how much we've got left to spend, like family and the kids, and shopping and wherever else. So he's not allowed it unless I have to give him power yeah. to go to the bank. <laughs> But the best, 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 best thing for me is not to have money because I do get the urge all the time. And like I said, it's the devil. David hasn't had permanent work in years, but while job hunting online, he may have found the perfect vacancy. Your earnings from £400 to £650 per week, up to seven days a week. Today, David's going to find out about the job at a seminar but he hasn't left enough time to get suited and booted. I was going to put a shirt on and uh, I haven't got time to iron it. The seminar is at a hotel in Gateshead, an hour's drive north. It could be the answer to all his prayers. Dream job, I love the different types of jobs, but my realistic job is like driving. I love driving, so obviously I would like it. I won't be stuck at one place or standing in a place in a factory for eight hours a day or 12 hours a day, I'd be on the road to what, what I like doing. David's hoping if the seminar goes well, he'll be offered an interview. If you get an interview, you got to go for it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. But I'm hoping I get it because I love driving. as David heads towards the possibility of coming off benefits. In Seam, County Durham, 
single mum Julie says her benefits have been cut after she failed to declare her earnings as a nightclub singer. As a result, she's nearly two grand in debt. To boost her finances, she's found a part-time job as a receptionist in Sunderland. I work on a Wednesday, Friday and a Saturday. And it's from 9 till 2, Wednesday and Friday, and a Saturday is 9 till 3, which is ideal for me, you know, so I can get Alex from school. It means she's £23 a week better off than on income support. It's not much, but Julie's delighted to be earning again. When I got my job after being out of work for so long, it made me feel like a person again. I didn't just feel like a mum. And because I'd sunk so low into depression from not working, it made me feel good. But today, she's come home to an unwelcome letter from the council. Now she's working, they're reducing her housing benefit. They're only giving me £14 benefit towards my rent. So I think they expect me on £120 a week to pay £78.44 rent and full council tax. And I just, you literally... Mm. I don't know how they expect you to pay it on such a low wage. It's, um, I'm going to have to go down tomorrow and see what's going on. As well as cutting off her benefits, the letter says she must pay off her rent arrears or she could be out on the street. Um, and I've, they're saying that I've got to pay £807 or they're going to seek possession of the house. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go to Citizens Advice and see what them say. <sighs> Back in Maidstone, aspiring musician Diaz is 10 grand in debt. He quit his job due to depression. When he was working, he spent thousands buying equipment for his home studio to try and achieve his dream of making it big. I brought one thing, one thing, one thing all the time. Like, every paycheck, I'd say, all right, I want to get this. Next paycheck, I want to get that. And, you know, little by little, I managed to, to get all the things I wanted. To help build an online fan base, Diaz films himself performing his music. Spiritual like a dread man, only walk with good men. I'm a soldier fighting for God's gang. I'm not praying the almighty has a plan. While you stay bowing to the devil in doors, I run the poor people in force. But with money tight now, he's decided to pawn his video camera to raise extra cash. Wow! Diaz has had a call from the pawn shop. I'm sure you said it was less last time, that like 2.30. He's in rent arrears of £375 and has been threatened with eviction. Now he has to decide whether to pay off the bulk of his arrears or buy back his camera for £270. Basically, I'd drawn out almost £300 to get the camera and, sa and save my camera. To lose it would be like losing half of my creative power, so I have to get it out. In Gateshead, David's arrived for his job seminar. He's hoping it will lead to an offer of work as a self-employed delivery driver and eventually to a route out of his 30 grand debt. After a couple of hours, the seminar is over, but David's not impressed by what he's heard. Um, well, it went all right, but um, yeah, I've got to pay 60 quid for the application form, fill it all out. Then I've got to go down Leeds next Thursday for like a drugs test and like a test and do some paperwork right down Leeds. David's worried that being self-employed means his weekly pay packet isn't guaranteed. Um, you get a work fan from them and that you can come out with 150 quid, 190 quid. But if you get, then you've got to pay all your stuff, your accountants and your fan, your tax and everything. But you, get, you do that every 13 weeks and you can earn like 22 grand, nearly 23 grand a year. David says if he wants to proceed, he has to fork out the cash 
for the company to carry out background checks on him. There's a catch to it, as in, I've got to pay £60, he said, I think it was a bit more, a bit less, and then I've got to go to Leeds next Thursday. I've never been to Leeds before. He's finding the application process overwhelming. I'm going to talk to my girlfriend and see what happens. David has a big decision to make. In Seam, single mum Julie has just received a letter saying her housing benefits are being reduced due to her part-time receptionist job. She's also being threatened with eviction if she doesn't pay off her rent arrears. Basically, I want to go in and get it sorted because it's going to make a massive impact on my life if I don't get this sorted. Julie's desperately hoping the council have got their sums wrong, so she's off to the council offices with friend Emma for moral support. Just like at the end of the tunnel, basically, to sort out these debts and see where I can go from there, see what I can do. And just... Someone's got to be wrong somewhere, though, if that's, if that's okay. it. I mean, nobody else that I know pays that kind of, like, rent and council no. tax. Julie needs to persuade the council not to evict her. But 30 minutes later, she's out, and the meeting hasn't gone well. I told her how much I was struggling. And in a way, at first, she was a little bit rude. She was saying, well, you're going to have to do it, or you're out. And I was saying, well, how, if I've got to pull out all of my wages for this, how am I going to live? How am I going to buy food? And she went, well, you can go to a food bank. A food bank? I know, but I've got to be up for the burn for school as well. I'll have to go to the food bank with the burn. I'll pick the burn up, maybe pick the burn up from school and then go to the food oh, bank. No. Yeah, we'll drop you off first, we'll go and get the burn, then I'll come. What? Julie says she's been told she'll face eviction unless she pays off £800 of her rent arrears by the end of the month. She fears that means having no money left to buy food. I've got to use every penny that I get to pay it and I've got to go to the food banks for me food and, and gas and electric. So I've got to go along there now to the food bank. <sighs> Coming up, David thinks he might be better off on benefits after all. Um, well, if I took the job, it would have basically made us worse off, I reckon. Diaz has a chance meeting with a music manager who's promising to make him a star. You want to go on the journey? Yeah. And I can help you go on the journey. And Julie's debts have forced her onto the breadline. I'm distraught because, obviously, I didn't think things would get this bad. In Britain, it's estimated one in four of us don't have anything put aside for a rainy day, and our debts are on the up and up. In Hartlepool, unemployed dad of three David has racked up £30,000 debt in loans, unpaid bills and higher purchase agreements. Now he's been offered an interview for a job as a delivery driver, but it comes with a few catches. Having chewed it over with girlfriend Rebecca, he's decided against going for the interview. Um, well, if I took the job, it would have basically made us worse off, I reckon, because I haven't got my own van. Time I paid the, my van, the insurance, kept money from your own tax, because you have to pay your own tax and that. Um, I would have been left with an out. Then if you don't get any work in one day or two days or three days, I've got no work for three days and I've got no money to pay bills and stuff like that. So it's just not worth it. They said it's guaranteed work, but when I read up reviews and looked, uh, looked into more into it, it just wasn't worth it. David says he would even have to pay a £60 fee to apply for the job, but there's no guarantee of work. He thinks he's better off signing on. When it, when it happened, I felt angry and I was pissed, pissed off. Over there. It went one, one, like a couple of days ago, but now I'm all right now. I just have to carry on and still look for work. But like, obviously, people know I'm looking for work, so they can't say, oh, at least um, he's trying to look for work, basically, which I am. In Maidstone, unemployed dad Diaz is weeks away from eviction. At the moment, the only money he has coming in are his benefits. In order to carry on claiming, every three weeks, 
He needs a doctor's note to say he's unfit to work. Hello, um, I was phoning to get a repeat um, medical um, certificate, please. Diaz has booked an appointment to see his GP. Thank you very much, yeah? Cheers, bye. He's hoping the doctor will continue to sign him off sick and has decided to smarten up for his appointment. Uh, my mum always said, whenever you go to see the government, you should try and dress up smart. I don't know why, but I've always listened to what she said. Diaz heads out to the doctors. After a short wait, he's got the medical certificate he was hoping for. All right, just got my certificate now. I'm going to um, send this off uh, by bringing it down to the job centre and letting them fax this to the ESA head office. Diaz's benefits are sorted for now, but he's still no closer to paying off his rent arrears. In Siam, former nightclub singer Julie is also facing eviction, unless she can clear £800 of the rent arrears she owes to the council. With only £14 a week housing benefit coming in, she's been forced to use a food bank for the first time in her life. I'm distraught because obviously I didn't think things would get this bad. bad. But, um, I need to, sort, need to sort my bills out. I've got to get on top of it. And being on benefits, people, that's what happens to you when you're on benefits. Bills pile up and you can't manage. You what, son? With Julie needing to save every penny to avoid eviction, she's stocked up on the basics from the local food bank. Necessities like pasta, cereals, rice, tins, jams, um, soap powder. Just normal family things. Um, I think it's because of someone that's worked like, my whole life. You don't want anybody to know that you can't afford food. You don't want anybody to know that you can't afford heating. And now having to go in there and show people how vulnerable you are. Julie now realises she made a big mistake five years ago by not declaring her income. It's left her in a far worse situation. Two million. So, I suppose, in a way, I shouldn't have, a few years ago, when I did decide to sing, I shouldn't have done it. But by God, I shouldn't have to pay all these years later. And by God, I've paid. How you doing? How you doing, man? Oh, my. It's not, more, it's not more bills, is it? Back in Maidstone, for Diaz, the unpaid bills keep piling up. Thank you. Debts for, oh, God, notice of summons of arrears, um, payday loans, which I would never advise anybody to get a payday loan. More debts, more, more debt collectors. More, another 24-7 uh, money box, another payday loan. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot to sort out. A lot. Diaz has been trying to make it as a singer. Now he's hoping an unexpected meeting outside a local supermarket could lead to a successful music career and a way out of his 10 grand debt. I bumped into this guy coming out of Tesco's and I was asked, I just turned around to him and said, oh, so what's your plans for Christmas? And then we ended up having a talk. The man Diaz met in a car park told him that he's a music manager and he says he's interested in signing Diaz up. I sent him over my website link. Um, and yes, this morning, he sends me a message back basically saying to me, he wants to talk to me ASAP. Filled with hope, Diaz has set up a meeting. No, I really feel good today, do you know what I mean? Like, um, I really feel like my luck is changing, you know? Definitely. Security company director Mick has recently set up a management agency. All right, man. He's told Diaz 
that he's interested in signing up talented artists, and he could fit the bill. What is the name of your record company or your agency or whatever? Well, I'm forming a company called um, uh, Kite, Kite Flow Music International. Kite Flow Music International, okay. Uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, my favourite singer is Al Jarreau, and I just heard a bit of Al Jarreau in you. Diaz and Mick are having their big meeting in the local pub, and Diaz is giving it his best shot. Obviously, uh, we only met briefly yesterday, yes. and it was quite a, a good conversation. Yeah. You yeah. was excited, I was excited. Yeah. You want to go on a journey, yeah. and I can help you go on the journey. So I need to know a bit about your journey, where you want to go, what you've done, who you are. And that's it, really. OK. Well, I've been doing music all my life. Um, I would say I'm just a born entertainer. Um, and what I would really like to be is a household name, you right. know, for my music to touch as many people as possible, you know. How many have you touched at the moment? Um, God, I would say over 100,000 now. Mick thinks he's the man to help Diaz reach the stars and record with the greats. Oh, my favourite singer is George Benson. I'd love you to sing with them. Well, of course. They've got a studio down oh. in Maui, which I saw George Benson performing. Oh, my God. So goodness. something like that would true. be a dream for me, to no, see no. you do that as that well. That would be a dream come true. So true. we'll have to get in touch with him. Let's hope I can help you do that, then. <laughs> I'm sure I can with your talent. Mick's got big plans and bigger dreams. In, 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 in my business, I'm called a, a facilitator, oh, which means I help gosh, people. Wow. I'm called a maverick because I do things special. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. That's my dream. Thank you very much. Diaz has walked away from today's meeting with a copy of a management contract. After years of trying to make it big, it's all come as a shock. Oh, right. What an amazing day. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm still overwhelmed right now. Um, I've, I've just had an amazing uh, lunch slash dinner, um, spoken about my, what I want, my aspirations in the music. Uh, he seems to understand what I want and what I want to do. And um, it looks very positive. Like, thank you, God. <laughs> what can I say? In Siam, single mum Julie has joined the ranks of the estimated half a million people who use food banks. She needs to save money to help clear her rent arrears with the council. Debt has affected my life massively because um, you get you, you, you seek into a depression that you feel like you can't get out of and I'm still struggling with it now I'm still trying to like deal with it for years of being like this and not being able to work and not get any help it's uh, it's soul destroying But a routine trip to the dentist has given Julie something potentially much more serious to worry about. Oh, yeah, I went, to the, I went to the dentist and it was just for a regular checkup. And he noticed the back of my throat and he sent me, uh, to, he got an emergency appointment at Chesley Street Hospital. And I had to go through and get the camera down. And when she's put the camera down, she said that um, all down the right side of my body. Um, my right tonsil, my right vocal cord, uh, doesn't work. And it's the, my right tonsil's got a growth on it. The doctors have told Julie she could have throat cancer. She's now nervously awaiting the results of more tests. Obviously, I, I get the scan on Thursday because I want to rule out if it is in my lymph glands and how far it's gone in my lymph glands. The doctor uh, wants all of that checking before she does the surgeries, just to be on the safe side. With a potential cancer diagnosis, Julie's feeling even more isolated and fearful for what the future might hold. I haven't told Alex, no, he doesn't, he doesn't he's only nine, he doesn't need to know. Um, I've told him I'll get my tonsils out, so just in case, the worst, com worst scenario, I just think that this month's been the worst month in my life, to be quite honest. 
coming up, Diaz gets his big break. Diaz Rodriguez in the building. But there's no one there to watch. David's piling up even more debt. Free legal assessment. And Julie gets the results of her tests. Aspiring musician Diaz has put his debt worries aside and travelled to London's West End for what he hopes will be his big break. He's been told he'll perform at a glamorous casino and nightclub in front of hundreds of diners. If it goes well, Diaz is hoping music manager Mick, who he met outside Tesco, will sign him up. This is something that's life-changing. At the end of this performance, I could have a contract with a manager, and then some point this year, I could have a major recording deal. This will change my life, and it will change the life not only for myself, but for my kids and for my family. So I'm going to give it 100%. I'm going to give it 1,000%. Yeah, bro. At the venue, Mick has got some bad news. Diaz is going to be performing to an empty room. We're not doing the diners. Okay. So you've got just an open space oh my to do God. what you want to do. Wow. Which is a showcase to me. There it is. Diaz is disappointed, as he believed his performance was going to be watched by someone who might book him for future gigs. It's a bloody shame, man. This guy made us go do all of this stuff and then doesn't even turn up. But yeah. he's missing the live performance. So kind of I'm like, just me, he was he, the one who, he, he, who he, pushed us a, to do this. He's a bit upset, I must admit. He's sitting there and he's a bit like down. He said, mate, I wish I'd come, but I can't. But Mick doesn't want today to be a complete waste of time. He's decided to shoot some promotional video on his mobile phone. And Diaz is still keen to impress. The idea is to perform to my manager so he can see what he's signing, and um, hopefully the rest will be history. All right, let's do this. Well, this track's called Do You Really Have to Go? That's it, come and sign a contract now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, really? Perfect. No, Performance no, no. over, like now it's down to business. Much. Oh, my God. Well, Diaz, one song's good enough for me, mate. Seriously? Yeah. You know I came with, like, six, though. Oh, we well, might hear another <laughs> couple in a minute and then pass you later. Right, oh, my this days. is a contract we've gone through. Right, yes. We're all happy with it. Yes. Everything's great. Yeah. We're going to sign it now. And that's it, I'm your manager. I'm going to take you on your journey you want to go. Man, this, is, this is amazing, man, seriously. I've done my bit, you've got to sign it. And well, put, you and, signed you know, yours already, you didn't even mess it already. around. No, right? no, no, I signed it within the first verse. Oh, gosh, wow. Well. All right, that's me. Diaz is hoping that having Mick as his manager will be his ticket to stardom and out of debt. <laughs> In Siam, Julie's recently been told by doctors she might have throat cancer. Best friend Courtney has been an ever-present shoulder to cry on. <laughs> Today, Julie's just received the test results she's been waiting for, and thankfully, she's got the all clear. I, I, don't, think I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so happy because I just thought, get in, and I just I couldn't be happy now. So everything seems to be falling into place. It kind of puts everything into perspective because I was thinking, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel as long as you, you get on top of things and you sort out plans, payment plans, and you, you keep your job, as long as you can keep your job and you can get on, you, you end up, you know, you get out of the debt that you're in. That's, that's not what matters. It's, it's all right keeping a roof over your head. It's, it's what matters in life is being healthy, being alive and being a good man, being a good friend and being there for your friends and just getting on with life and... I'm never going to let things like that stress me out anymore. When I went into hospital and found out that it wasn't cancer, what a massive relief. I just, thank God, thank God. I'm still here for me soon. <laughs> now Julie's cancer worries are behind her, she's also had some more good news. 
She's just had a letter from the council to say some of her housing benefits are being reinstated. The extra cash means she can start paying off her rent arrears. It says uh, you were underpaid £182.54 from the period of the 25th of 7th. An extra £20 a month, which is an extra £20 a month on my arrears. I can pay. Yeah. I'll just pay exactly the same amount, just then it'll get it, it'll get it down quicker, won't it? Yeah. So that's, that's a weight off my mind. In Hartlepool, after turning down an interview, David's 30 grand debts aren't going away. Birthdays and Christmas have proven expensive. Because I said I only wanted to spend up about 150 quid on each of them, and I think we probably spent about 250 quid on each of them. So that's like 750 quid on three kids. It's because of some of the presents that you buy are like 50 odd quid. To fund his spending on the children, David has turned to yet more borrowing. And I took another loan out just before Christmas, and my girlfriend took another loan out just before Christmas. But it was, really, it was the same people and that. It was just ready to renew. And obviously, we didn't really want to, but obviously we want that bit extra money just over Christmas period, because obviously we didn't know what we were going to be doing. As the loans tot up, so do the red letters. Um, it's just a pre-legal assessment saying that oh, £247.56. If I had the money, I'd save the lottery, I would pay off all my debt. So then I would never get any letters now like that and I'd get my credit back. But obviously I don't win the lottery because I don't put the lottery on, so... With no chance of striking it lucky, David hasn't got the money to pay his bills. I've never had beer lifts. Like, like I said that there, £247.56. It would cost more than sending me to court than them actually trying to get the money off us. Back in Maidstone, Diaz has finally had some good news. Despite performing to an empty room in a London casino, he's now been promised a paid gig. After doing the showcase, uh, my manager Mick has managed to uh, secure um, a few bookings now at the casino. But the money won't be enough for Diaz to avoid his looming eviction. Today, he's off into town to try and find somewhere new to rent. I'm uh, going to go into a couple of estate agents and basically see if there's any uh, properties that, you know, can suit my budget. But after meeting the estate agent, Diaz is shocked by how much a move will cost him. The total figure that I'm going to need to get to move in is, say, about 3,200. I would have to be earning 32,000 to be able to move in without having to get a guarantor involved. Basically, I mean, I, I don't have the money right now to be able to do this. I would have nowhere to go to right this minute. With his debts and no job, for now, Diaz will have to juggle dreams of stardom with a search for work. Obviously, my, my back's against the wall regarding the situation I'm in. Um, so I've put my CV out there, and I can't rely on anybody to, to bail me out of this situation. I've been to a job interview yesterday, which looks quite promising as well, um, back in IT, what I usually do. Um, this is the first interview I've been to, um, but it seems like there's quite a few lined up as well in the future. Diaz hopes coming off benefits will lead to a debt-free future. Regarding the debt situation, I mean, when I go back to work, you know, obviously I'll be able to increase the payments I'm making. And I do think, you know, before the end of the year, I should be able to be debt-free. His sudden death on Christmas Day shocked the world. Take a look at the last days of George Michael, brand new next. 
The Doc Dodgers finally cave and check in for a proper checkup, and you don't tell the doctor over on Five Star next. Whilst on Five USA, even Firehouse 51 isn't safe from corruption in New Chicago Fire.